Today in the bunker, we're going to look at some 20 millimeter figures for Zona Alpha. Recently, a friend of mine, who is also a viewer, uh, sent me several sets of these figures from Redbox in the Ukraine. So these are made in the zone. Okay, maybe not really, but there are two sets of stalkers, set one and set two, imaginatively named. And also, he sent me a box of the Russian Federal Forces for a zone patrol. And these are available on the internet. Probably the easiest place to get them is on eBay. Um, sometimes you'll find them on some other websites. But they've got, there's 48 figures in the box, 12 poses. So they're great sets to split with somebody because I don't know what you would ever do with that many figures of that few poses, but that's not to take away from the value of the set. Um, these sets usually are under 20 bucks, so 48 figures for under 20 bucks, you can't beat that. And they're nice figures. So as you can see, there's a kind of an interesting variety of themes. This guy especially being probably the most zone-like. And then some of them you can tell, you know, they had a, a Raider of Tombs and uh, some sort of ninja. Of course, the obligatory Russian guy with the minigun. And then the second set has more of the same type of figures. And the nice thing about getting both sets is you can kind of combine them and do them in themes. So I made... I took figures from both sets and made them into different little sort of war bands. And then the Russian Federal Forces, these guys are fantastic. This, this box is insane with some of the poses. Um, I always wanted a box of plastic army men where a guy was taking a whiz into the bushes. Or maybe he was having a vodka with his buddy. But in any case, they were really nice sculpts. Um, another one, you know, these, these are all 48 figures in here. This one's technically Orion, but it's uh, red box. And the figures themselves are nicely sculpted. And I think they paint up very well, uh, even with my meager skills. But you get all 12 figures on one sprue, you get four sprues each in the box. So it's easy to just pull the sprue out, hand it to your buddy and say, here, go to town. Or go to the zone. Or go wherever it is you need to go. And they come packaged in a plastic bag, very sanitary. And as you can see, we kind of picked off some of the figures to use. But, uh, yeah. It's good stuff. So here is a group that I did from the Russian Federal Forces. And like I said, these guys are my zone patrol. Uh, you could easily make them be bandits. They could stand in for bandits very easily. Uh, or maybe both at the same time. And then the first of my squads that I got painted it consists of figures from the first and second boxes. And I was going for kind of a, almost a biker theme, kind of like Billy from Predator. Anyway, they're, they're kind of like Billy. They run around. They do stuff. The next group I did were all of the figures in gas masks. So that ended up being five guys. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's two other guys in gas masks, but we'll get to them in a minute. But it's um, five guys all wearing gas masks, a good assortment of shotguns and assault rifles. So they're a pretty versatile crew. Next up, I just picked out four guys who had long coats but not wearing gas masks. And that gives you a kind of interesting assortment too. We've got a sniper rifle, a shotgun, an assault rifle, and a guy with a scoped handgun and a tomahawk. Uh, the shotgun guy also has a tomahawk, and the assault rifle guy has a sword, so they're ready for close or far. These guys are kind of a mix, uh, a crossbow, a bow, a sniper rifle, shotgun, a 
assault rifle or submachine gun, depending on how you want to call that one. And of course, uh, Laura with two pistols. And it's kind of a sort of a fun group. And lastly are the sort of heavy weapons guys and the specialist. Uh, I've got a ninja in there. Uh, of course, the obligatory Russian with the minigun. And two guys wearing the sort of power assisted frames. One has a uh, multi shot grenade launcher, the other one has a uh, light machine gun. And these guys, I figured I would use them as specialists or gun for hire, um, somebody you can add to a group if they need to boost a firepower. But there's no right or wrong way to do these. That was just kind of how I divided them up. But it shows you you got a lot of options. Um, you can you can do all number of crazy things with them. And um, and I hear you say, well, but you know, Axel, they're plastic. What do you do with them? What I do with them is I rough up the base a little bit. I super glue them to a fender washer, and these are three quarter inch, I believe. They're about the same size as a penny. You could glue them to a penny. That'd be fine. It's probably cheaper. It's just not magnetic, and I have some magnetic boxes I put these in, but not mandatory. They don't really have any weight other than the base, so you could easily base them on pennies, and it'd be fine. Then uh, glue on my ground texture, in this case uh, just sand with PVA, and then I coat the whole thing with a mix of Bod Podge and black paint, uh, as you may have seen on uh, Black Magic Craft, which is a fantastic channel, and you should watch it. But I give that a good coat and let that dry. And the nice thing about the Mod Podge is, is it's ever so slightly flexible. So if the figures bend a little bit, it doesn't just flake right off, which has always been a, a complaint, a legitimate complaint about painting plastic figures. This stuff, you give it a good coat, let it dry, uh, it, it lasts very well. I used to use PVA, and that'll work too if you don't have the Mod Podge. But I think the Mod Podge is a little bit better. But it also has really good tooth. When you go to paint it, that first coat of paint, it, it sticks really well in my experience. And then you just paint them and base them as you would any other figure. And then give them a you know shot of a uh, dull coat or some kind of matte varnish or whatever when you're done. But they uh, they're great figures. Other good sources for figures are among the 20 millimeter future and near future ranges: uh, Britannia, RH Models, Elheim, Platoon 20. All there's other ranges I'm probably forgetting. Um, all have fantastic figures that will easily work in the zone. Like these fellows here are some modern or fairly modern uh, Middle East, sort of a generic Middle Eastern army that I had painted. And they will make fantastic bandits because they're guys with helmets and AKs. They're running around in the zone. So they're, they're kind of generic for that. They don't have to be bad as you could you could make the player characters from those forces that would be no problem just there's so many fantastic figures plastic and metal out there to use in 20 millimeter I encourage you to go find them and paint them if you've been watching the channel you know I love to scratch build things but recently I got a 3d printer I got an Ender 3 Pro and I'm still learning how to use it but you could make really really fantastic terrain with that and I think of it like a kind of a crock pot for miniatures is I can put a print on and because I'm working from home right now I can start it in the morning and by lunchtime or the end of the day I have some fantastic tray full of things that I get to paint. So I'm working on those really unique Russian concrete walls, the Soviet era walls and this is a print that did not turn out quite like I wanted, but I'm still going to use it because there's so many variations that uh, this could easily be in a commercial area in town or whatever. It's Blyatsk. It's fencing. And we'll have a future episode where I actually put together some of the fences. Um, I'm going to 
do these at the ground line, the legs will come off, and, but you'll see that. That's, that's all for later. And there are going to be several different variations that will be correctly scaled. This one's my mistake, but I'm, I'm going to use it anyway. The thing I like about this is I, I put them on a raft. That's what this thing is called. And it makes a handy pallet, at least for one side. These are some wreckage piles and sort of trash and whatnot that are actually intended for gas lands. And, you know, of course I'll use them for that, but they'll also fit very well in the zone. Um, just sort of refuse piles and whatnot that are scattered around. Just handy scattered terrain for Yuri to hide behind when the bullets start flying. Another thing that I've been doing is trying to find STL files for Eastern European vehicles. And I haven't been real successful yet, but my first efforts, I've got this cargo van. It's called a Zook. It's a Beetle. It's Polish. But it'll fit in the zone very nicely because it's weird and square and I like it. It's... My printer is not the greatest, but with that same kind of prep work, a little bit of sanding where it's really, really rough or the transition lines are really noticeable, smooth that out a bit and then put on multiple and I mean 10, 12 very thin coats of that Mod Podge and black paint and that will smooth stuff out quite a bit and make a pretty decent model for the table. I mean they're not, you're not going to win any awards with it but it's good enough to throw on the table and somebody say wow that thing looks crazy and the, again it takes paint really well so it's uh, kills two birds with one stone. Other good stuff you can find on eBay and also I think Hobby Link sometimes carries these uh, are these various modern like armored car kits, vehicle kits. Also these die casts that I think come in kind of a random assortment and like these aren't super useful for the zone other than if you built like a, um, a pedestal and put it on there for a World War II memorial, that would be great. But um, they do have BTRs and other modern vehicles in the range. But if you're like me and you do different periods and eras, then um, these are great because like this is going to get repainted and used in the Spanish Civil War because it's one of the most awesome tanks of the time. And it's basically a dumpster with uh, wheels and treads on it and it flies around. It's really cool. I know that wasn't super exciting, but I just wanted to put something out there for you guys to take a look at. I've been kind of slack the last few weeks with everything that's been going on. I hope you guys are all safe. But um, anyway, we'll have some better videos coming up where I'll paint some more of this stuff, and won't that be cool? But thanks for watching, guys.